Good morning all. It's another beautiful day here. We're planning a ride today that could end up around the 90 mile mark. We're planning to head out to Horncastle to a cycling cafe we've never been to before. We've got gentle breeze today really, it's about seven or eight miles an hour and the route will take us directly into wind. So we're gonna have about 45 miles into wind, but hopefully on the way back, we'll get some assistance just when we need it. I'm pleased to see that we're getting many more lady subscribers now, which is ideal because we want to encourage as many people to cycle as possible. And I know there are some barriers sometimes that women feel exist in cycling. Now I'm meeting Wendy, who's my regular ride partner, and I'm hoping that we can have a chat with Wendy. She has quite a take on female cycling and how the cycle industry needs to change. So I won't preempt what I think she'll say, but we'll have a chat to her later. As always, I'd love to hear your comments, so please make them below. And specifically, if you are a lady cyclist, you know what the barriers are. Because once we know what the barriers are, we can tear them down. Morning. Morning. Well, we just made it up our first hill of the day, Gelston Hill. As you can see, we've got lots of newborn lambs.
Well, we've arrived in Horncastle. Um, we're at just one more bike, which is a cycling cafe we've longed to visit. So we've just made it. Uh, 50, 51 and a half miles for me, because I had 10 more than Wendy. But then probably on the way back, she'll have 10 more than me. So uh, you never know, we might even make a century ride today. Wendy's having a cup of tea, but I'm having a doom bar, ice cold. So I shall be rocket powered on the way back with the tailwind as well. And we've been joined by Lee Wakefield from Grimsby. Say hello, Lee. Hello. <laughs> and Lee has a very special bike and we're gonna have a look at it when we've finished our food. Right, so we're just about to leave the aptly named Just One, just more, one bike. more Bike. And this is Paul, oh. who runs Just One More Bike. So you can come here, you can have a cup of coffee, you can have a beer, you can get your bike fixed. Bacon butties. Bacon butties. Paninis. Ah. Baked beans on toast. So do it. Oh. The, 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 Paul's just subscribed, otherwise I wouldn't be doing this. <laughs> <laughs> come on then, Lee. So this is Lee's machine. So tell us about this, Lee. Now, I have to apologise to Lee at this point because I hadn't allowed for the amount of traffic noise and people talking in the vicinity. We were in a busy high street. Uh, so we can't hear Lee that well. So I'm afraid you're gonna have to put up with me explaining his machine. It's made by Velomobile and the model is Snook. I assumed it was a fiberglass shell over a frame, but no, Lee told me it's actually a monocoque construction of carbon fiber. It's a tricycle configuration. And as you can imagine, it's highly aerodynamic with a very low drag coefficient with none of the usual drag created by the rider. Lee has managed 60 miles per hour downhill and 40 miles per hour on the flat. It has full suspension, lights, and drum brakes, but weighs in at 25 kilos, so it makes it quite hard work on the hills. If you want to know more, then have a look at the Velomobile website. And if you've got 8,000 pounds to spare, you can even order one. Apart from having the cash, you'll also have to be shorter than 178 centimetres. Now, hopefully we'll meet Lee again and we can have a proper chat. And if you're in the North Lincolnshire area, I'm sure you'll have seen Lee passing by, so stop and have a chat, introduce yourself. Well, enjoy the rest of your day. It's, it's nice to meet you. And uh, no doubt we'll bump into you again. See you, bye. That was a bit oh, rapid. That made me jump. I felt I was on my last legs going the other way. It's certainly lovely to have a sunny day, isn't it? When it's not cold. Yeah. And we're still only in early March, well, late March. Yeah, and I think the, the thing we're in danger of falling foul of, especially today, is that it gets dark. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think we might get a problem with that. Well, we'll See be how okay. we go. We've got lights. We're on the Fen Road. We saw this memorial on the gate. So it's saying at 1720 hours, 15th of February 1944, a Lancaster JB 534 Zulu November Kilo took off from RAF Metheringham destination Berlin. Basically, they're saying after running the gauntlet of German air defences. Seven hours later, they were in the circuit waiting to land at Metheringham and in avoiding a collision with another Lancaster, they lost control and the aircraft crashed in the adjacent field with five crew dying and two seriously injured. So somewhere in this field, So we're on our way back now. It's a tailwind, which is good. And as promised, we'll have a little chat with Wendy. So Wendy, you've got some pretty strong views, I think, on female cycling, particularly from a bike manufacturer point of view. Yes, I have. I think bike manufacturers are very lazy 
and don't make sufficient bikes for women. Um, Lives probably the exception and maybe specialise, but beyond that, you have to have a male bike or what they call a unisex bike. Which is a cop-out. Which is a total cop-out, because when you find out a unisex bike is that they make it in smaller sizes for women. That's not making it customised for women. No. Women are a different shape. Women tend to have shorter arms. And yes, we could change the handlebar and this, that and the other, but why should we? Why aren't they making them for us? Makes me very cross. Car back. Because I think you uh, inquired about one of these Planet X bikes. Yes, I did. I was asking about titanium bikes for women. Uh huh. Because I can't find one anywhere, which is a, apart from bespoke, which would cost a fortune. One off the shelf? Nah. You can't get one for women. Planet X did try to sell me a unisex one. And when I asked what made unisex different from a male one, the answer was, well, we have them in smaller sizes. Mm. That is not a women's bike. I'm sorry, it's just not. We're trying to encourage more women to cycle. And I mean, you, you do have a, an awful lot of women cycle. Well, not an awful lot of women, but we have a lot of women cycling. Yeah. But you'd have thought manufacturers would have woken up to the need to have a more specific female range. You feel that if you're a woman, you can only have a bike with a basket on the front. Yeah. And you know, not all women want a bike with a basket on the front. They actually might want to do some lovely road cycling. So you've, that bike you've got is a Live, yeah? It is, yeah. Yeah, so one of the brands you, you did say do cater for women. Yeah, one of the very few, sadly. I think one of the things that we ought to have as well available, readily available, are clip-on ponytails. <laughs> <laughs> Which I think is another one of your pet <laughs> subjects. I just get jealous because any woman going fast on a road bike seems to have a ponytail. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and some of the men. So how long ago did you start cycling, Wendy? Um, well, I've cycled all my life, but road cycling probably about five years. Uh -huh. So not very long ago at all. I bought a specialised ladies bike off Gumtree uh -huh. for about £200 and that was my first step into road cycling. Then when I felt a bit braver, I did a sportive, did about a 30 mile sportive and then uh, feeling a bit braver, I did some of the British cycling rides, did a breeze one and then I did some of the ones in the Grantham area. And then from then on, I've just got hooked. I've heard that the ride leader in the Grantham area is a particularly good guy. <laughs> <laughs> he has his moments. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's so pretty with all the daffodils. Wendy's left now, so I've got about nine miles to go home. We're now on 95 miles at the moment. So when I said it was going to be about 90 miles today, I forgot that I'd got nine miles each way to go and pick Wendy up. So obviously it's going to be more, but the Garmin ran out of power and I didn't notice so I reckon 
probably wasn't working for about five miles. So, but anyway, we'll certainly get the 100 today, century in miles, but I would think it's going to be more in reality, probably 110, something like that. I don't know if you can see that fantastic moon on the horizon. It's full moon, it looks like. I don't know how much of this you can see now because it's quite dark now. I'm on the canal towpath. Be careful because I don't want to get wet. But also today, coming through Scopwick, we stopped at the traffic lights. Somebody called out, are you Roy? And it was a subscriber, Richard. Didn't know him. Now I do. Tomorrow, I've got two guided rides. It's our Cycle to the Woods event. So I'm pleased to say that I've charged up the Ribble E-Assist because I think I might need it tomorrow. Go deeper, don't I? Hello. Just do. 